Hello and welcome everybody to another Access OS session. Today we're having a technical update for you. If you don't know what Access OS is, it is our Linux based operating system that powers our Access Network devices. And looking at today's topic, I expect this session to spark high interest among our partners and customers. So let's not waste time and dive into things. My name is André Bastard, and I'm with the Access OS product management team here at Access Communications. And today we're going to cover the highly anticipated breaking changes of our next operating system generation, Access OS 12. On today's agenda, we're shortly recapping on what breaking changes are and how they fit into the Access OS lifecycle. And then we're going to take a look at the actual breaking changes and follow through with how we're helping customers and partners to cope with them. Okay, so breaking changes represent changes in the Access OS operating system that requires adaption from clients, such as video management systems that connect to the device, or for instance, ACAP applications that are running on the device. So essentially, the behavior of the Access device will change through breaking changes and requires external partner solutions and customers to understand, cope, and adapt to these changes in order to avoid issues. In that sense, active software development is never really static or fixed with no progress happening. It rather requires continuous changes and progressing towards new technologies and ways of working. And that in return enables us here at Access to provide innovative features and solutions to our customers and their businesses. So embracing this active software development and the change that comes with it are really vital when it comes to working with Access OS and our network products. And we certainly understand that we need to make this somewhat simple and therefore we try to introduce these changes carefully and embed them in the Access OS life cycle in transparency. And there are actually many reasons why breaking changes are vital and needed. And to be more specific, most of the breaking changes we introduce will improve the cybersecurity posture of access devices and the operating system. For instance, we want to provide a higher default security in our products and offload configuration tasks from our customers so that, for instance, the hardening guide gets shorter rather than longer. And on top of that, we learn from having third-party penetration testing conducted on our products, and we also receive valuable feedback through our bug bounty program, where we're having many individual security researchers looking at our operating system. Also, we want to comply with upcoming legislations and stay ahead of the curve by adapting to IT industry best practices. But also sometimes breaking changes mean that we simply take away functionality that is not used anymore or the other way around, we're improving features, making them much better by changing their actual behavior. So now the question is, where are we introducing these kind of breaking changes? And looking at the Access OS lifecycle, the answer to that is that these changes are introduced on the active track as our most progressive track where all software development takes place. And it's needless to say that we intend to introduce breaking changes in a controlled way so that customers and partners can adapt to them in time. So the next question then is, how do we do that? And to start with, we're going to release Access OS 11.11 in June as the last active track release, concluding Access OS 11 altogether. And this Access OS 11.11 release will then transform into the Access OS 2024 LTS track, providing software support until the end of 2029. And after that, we will be launching Access OS 12 and introduce all breaking changes. And we started to communicate these breaking changes as early as possible. Already in May 2023, the two major breaking changes were communicated externally. And the complete list of all breaking changes was made externally available in September 2023. So through our best effort approach, we're trying our best to proactively inform customers, partners, and really anyone using our products 
Also, we have seen our partners helping us with this too, and we appreciate their effort. And here finally we are looking at the actual breaking changes on a high level. Don't worry, more technical details and explanations of why we do them are available on Axis.com. This is just a simplified overview to start with. And I actually recommend reading through all of them, but I want to highlight the potential high-risk changes specifically. As an example, the removal of root privileges and the introduction of signed ACAPs are certainly interesting for our ACAP developing partners. And the removal of the deprecated OpenSSL 111 software component probably needs to be checked by both ACAP developers and VMS partners alike. Also, as a behavioral change, we're going to remove the Beloft default IP address that we had for so long in our products. And lastly, we think that the removal of the insecure SMB 1 and 2 versions for network shares need to be considered carefully when upgrading to Access OS 12, as in the worst case scenario, the Access device will stop recording. Okay, so now that we are aware of the breaking changes and know what they are, let's take a look at the next steps and what to take into consideration. We outline in great detail all breaking changes on Access.com and also provide a list of Access network products that will actually get Access OS 12. And you can find the links shown here in the description of this video later on for reference. And with this information at hand, it should be sufficient to review the list of breaking changes, understand if you have products that you consider to upgrade to Access OS 12, and then also take into consideration what video management system or other clients are used and Last but not least, also the usage of third-party ACAPs need to be considered and understood. And specifically for end customers and our integrators, we recommend to reach out to your VMS and ACAP supplier and get an understanding of whether Access Network products with Access OS 12 are compatible or being made compatible before updating your Access products to Access OS 12. Also worth mentioning is that the Access OS 2024 LTS can be used for the time being as a stopgap measure. And if any questions arise, please contact your local Access representative or contact our support help desk through chat, phone or ticket. And looking specifically at our partners and developers working with ACAP applications, we have more technical information at hand that we provide that should enable you to drive the transition towards Access OS 12. We also have opened a mail address that can be used to ask questions and get help to master this journey as smooth as possible. And I want to emphasize at this point that we encourage our partners and developers to get in contact with their customers and proactively help us in creating awareness in order to avoid potential issues later on. Okay, and that concludes the Access OS Breaking Changes session. Looking forward, we're being back soon with another release update covering the Access OS 11.11 release in June. And also, complementary to this video, we're working on another technical update session where we look at how to troubleshoot Access OS 12 breaking changes. And that's it for today then. I hope you enjoyed this session and feel ready for Access OS 12 to come around. Thanks a lot for joining in and keep an eye on more videos being published in our Access OS playlist on YouTube.